Hi, uh, this is Mike Hall, sitting down with Sergio Pereira. He runs the Chicago Alt.net user group. And um, I'm just going to ask him a few questions about his group. Uh, we'll start off with, uh, well, what is Chicago Alt.net? So, it's, ver it's very hard to define what uh, Alt.net is. I'm not going to dare try to define it. It's something that people want to define, defining when they're starting Alt.net. But I can give a few traits that could more or less describe the group. So I think we are mostly developers that are going after uh, the continuous impro improvement and uh, improvement of self or processes or the, and also the quality of the software uh, that you write. Uh, we like to think we are not necessarily .NET developers, but we are developers that happen to use .NET a lot, and probably like .NET a lot. And uh, I think we we try to also give a little bit of a voice to things that are good practices, good components, good uh, methodologies that may or may not come from Microsoft. It may or may not even be .NET necessarily. So we try to give space uh, for those things to be talked about. So th so it isn't just about technologies uh, that are related to Microsoft and, and .NET, but Things like testing and, and yeah, and, yeah exactly. agile and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, you know that that was that was all done that. But do you, how do how do people find out about your user group? Do you have a site? Have yeah, so well, we do have we do have our site. We have chicagoalt.net. Yeah, we'll moving we'll to that. Uh, we we have an account on Twitter. Uh, we have a mailing list. In reality, this site and. All the communications are mostly about our, our events and meetings. Yeah. Uh, there's no propaganda of any type of thing there. It's really just about the, the, the group events. Mm -hmm. um, but you can find out um, by subscribing several ways. I mean, I think the site has everything you need to know to you know, get info about the group. Well, um, so you know, we can contact you via the site or via the Twitter. You said that there's a mailing list. I'm sure all that's linked through. It's the all site. on the site. There's a okay. calendar. There's everything there. Okay, and uh, so. Uh, what is your kind of your meeting schedule? What, do you hold regular meetings? It's a monthly, bi-weekly, how do you do it? Yeah, we have a monthly meeting. We almost always meet on the second Wednesday of the month. We meet uh, on the Sears Towers, we list towers at Red Point Technologies. Uh, it's usually, uh, well, I guess we start 6.30 okay. uh, on those days, and it's once a month. Why do you, why do you go with 6.30? Why, why 6.30 versus uh, I, I, 6, 5 o'clock? Uh, I think they're, you know, I, I don't really know why, it just has always been 6.30. Yeah. I guess it, it's not too bad for people that work in the city and it's viable for people that are catching the train okay. from the suburbs. And uh, so, so uh, you know, like, how many people typically do you see at a meeting? Like, what is, do you have, uh, I mean, you've been doing this a while, how about over the last couple of years, how many people have you typically see, do you see like a few people or is it? Uh, I think so. I think an, av uh, an average meeting we would have like 25 people. Yeah. Um, we we have capacity about of 50, um, and we hit that several times. But normally it's really around uh, 25. So it's a it's a good size I think group for uh, anyone that even has not necessarily given talks to other user groups. Right. So. I think I encourage our members to give talks because they probably give talks to their, you know, development teams at yeah. work, and it's just a little bit of, of a next step to to bring their talks to our user group. Okay, so lot. I mean, you, you try to not just bring in external speakers, but you're trying to cultivate speakers. Inside oh, for the group. sure, for sure. I think so, especially in .NET. .NET is a funny .NET developers are funny type of developers. I mean, they have grown up being told what tools to use, how to do things, mostly by Microsoft. There's not a, you know, it's kind of comes with the territory. I mean, you work, it, .NET's a popular platform in businesses and enterprise, and it kind of comes with the kind of developers that you end up uh, having in .NET. And so there are not a lot of .NET speakers that are into non-Microsoft things. Some are, but they don't talk about, there's no, uh, venues for them to talk about. It. So one one way to change that, we believe, is 
it's one of the charters of our group is to create more speakers within the community and so we really try to get our members to be encouraged to present yeah. on topics and how often you're going to find a .NET user group that, that will invite you to talk about in Hibernate or yeah. Cold Sharp yeah. or, or I, Iron Ruby. Iron Ruby might, but you know. <laughs> Well, I, I have to say that the first uh, user group I ever went to was Chicago Alt.net and the first user group I ever spoke at was Chicago Alt.net. So there you go. That's why I wanted to interview you first, uh, you know, because uh, yeah, Chicago Alt.net is always, even though I'm not in the .NET community anymore, it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. Um, so ultimately, it, it really kind of comes down to, for you, you know, you've been doing this for a few years now, why do you do it? Why do you? Why do you continue to run the group and maintain it? So it's, yeah, so we started this group in late 2007. We had a few informal meetings for myself, uh, Derek Whitaker, um, and JDN. And then we had more, you know, get together with more people. I think you might have attended some of those. And I think for me is the opportunity to participate in the process of changing the .NET um, developer type of definition or stereotype, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot of, of room for improvement in, in, in your average .NET developer. I don't like the terminology, but in reality, that's what it is. And I think that over the last four years, not because of my group, of course not, but I've seen so many changes in .NET. I mean, Visual Studio now shipped with jQuery. Right. Really, that's that's huge if you look back four years. Yeah. So there are many things changing. Now. Microsoft is an MVC platform. A bunch of those things changed over the last four years because of feedback and pressure from people. Some of those were associated with .NET back then. And I think that makes the .NET developer a better developer. You know, having access to things that are just normal in other platforms. Yeah. So, you, so you enjoy being able to give developers who might not otherwise have an opportunity to voice their thoughts and, and ideas and what they're passionate about, a platform to come and learn about other people's passions and to also share their own. Yeah, I want to I wanna give uh, the, the regular .NET developer a chance to see uh, better ways of doing things yeah. that he might not have a chance to or see. It's different. It's, it's different. Well, I believe it's better, otherwise I would not be running the user group. So I do believe it's better, but it's my opinion. Uh, and you know, people come because they hope it's better. They don't know for sure, but they hope it is. And I do want them to have a chance. If I could, I would have to. I would like to bring every single .NET developer that worked with me to attend those meetings because I think it, it could be changing for them to to see you know see how test driven development is done, how behavior driven development works. So many people don't know those, those things because it's just not part of the .NET culture. It varies by organization, of course. There's always good places that do the right things, but it's not the rule. And uh, I think that by having those people come. And see ideas from other other platforms, other groups of developers brought to .NET, and even .NET technologies that are just not mainstream because they don't have a voice, they don't have a magazine that shows them all the time. That's the place that they can come, see those things, and judge from for themselves if, right. it, if it's going to work for them or not. And there and there are people speaking and, and showing those things. They have facts and numbers. And examples from other languages and even from .NET that they believe it works, and they want to show you that other things will work for you too. And I think that's more or less, it's more or less it. Try, like being part of that, like helping people a lot, and I think if the, any little bit of thing that I could do to help uh, .NET developer becomes become better, right. I think I I want to try doing that. It's really great. And uh, you know, just a, a few more specifics about the meetings themselves. You said typically you see in the range of 20, 25. Do you typically see people coming like repeat? Do you start to have regulars, or do you continually see new people? Because the, the diamond community is is so huge. It's huge. So we do have regulars, of course. We have a core group of people that do 
be there no matter what every month if it even if it's something that they have, have already learned they just like hang out so we have people that are there every month we have depending on the topic we have lots of people that are not .NET developers just because we're not necessarily talking about .NET topics every time and we're .NET developers but we're developers so we mingle with all developers from all platforms. I believe the last meeting or the upcoming meeting is on uh, uh, Kanban. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was this Kanban week. Kanban. Yeah. So, okay. and that was not everybody was a .NET developer there. Right. And then just, I think it's awesome that that happened. Uh, that's 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 the thing. I mean, I, all my participation in community events, I make sure it's not about .NET. It's about software development. Participate in Chicago Code Camp as well, and the same thing. We try to not make it about .NET, even if it's heavy on .NET, but it's not exclusive to .NET. Okay. And uh, you know, and and again, just a few more questions about the meetings themselves. Do you typically have food? Oh yeah, don't worry about <laughs> yeah. that. We yeah. guarantee guarantee food every. Uh, our sponsors, uh, main sponsor is Redpoint, which give us the, the space and dinner. So it's every month. Never. I don't think we ever had a month that we didn't have pizza. So okay. I'm very thankful for that. Do you like pizza? That's, yeah. No, it's, I think there's salad too. I don't pay attention <laughs> to those things. And um, and in the typical format, it's, is it? Do you usually have people coming in and talk, or do you ever do um, hands-on exercises? Is it more of the presentation style? Yes, people talk. Yeah. That that's where the there is a clash of culture I know, in the .NET world. I, we tried several times to have more hands-on events and uh, more participative type of meetings. And they just didn't go as well as we thought they should have gone. I think um, people, unfortunately, or fortunately, that's just the way they, they, they grew up in .NET. They just expect to attend those user meetings group meetings and sit down and watch a presentation and in the end ask questions and the people will eventually participate during the presentation asking questions but that's the extent that they expect to see in a .NET user group meeting. Uh, we had other occasions that we tried to have what we call the open open projector nights where anybody could come with any 10 minute presentation very similar to lightning talks and just keep their talks and it barely worked. It's kind of had mixed yeah. results. Yeah, it barely worked. So most of the people that came were the people that wanted to talk. So nobody came to see them talk. So I just realized there's not a lot of interest. We, we used to have the beginning of the meeting divided into two sections, a shorter presentation and then uh, more of a debate or a fish ball or whatever. <laughs> and it, the few, first few work, then people start leaving after the presentation because that's that's really what they're there for is, for, is the presentation. So we kind of cut on all the discussions after. We try to start food early so people can mingle and, and network and, and talk about things and just have a presentation at the end. I think that's what most people are, are interested in seeing. So we kind of, they're, it's funny because they are interested in seeing that and they uh, for whatever reason, they like someone to be there to select topics. Right. You know the participation. They like the curated. Yes. Kind of you know, it's not. It's not. The .NET meetings are very different from the, the Chicago Ruby meetings. I mean, it's not like people go in the mailing list and they offer talks and, and they volunteer to do talks or or discuss what next topic will be. For whatever reason that I don't know, that just doesn't really work well maybe maybe it's just we didn't figure out how to make it work yet so I'm in that role of me and, and Eduardo and trying to find the uh, speakers and the topics that could be uh, in line with the group's interest okay. it has been working we've been doing this for almost four years now okay, great well again this is Sergio Pereira with Chicago Alt.net thank you very much hey, for being my first interview no problem take care